Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullmoon Adventure Club and I have a super cool video for you today. We're gonna completely destroy a lithium RV battery. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery by Lion Energy. It's a Safari UT. It has 105 amp hours of power in it. And we're gonna completely destroy this by dropping it and then shooting it with a shotgun and a 357 Magnum to really see what happens when these batteries have unbelievably catastrophic failure, um, like they were in a gunfight. Um, so it's a lot of smoke and energy in the video. So before I share that, I'm gonna put a little, little bit of this into context for you. A lot of people are worried about having lithium batteries in their RV because they've all heard or seen uh, videos or whatever of lithium batteries bursting into flames uh, when they have the smallest failure. Like this video I'm gonna show you right here. This team just barely punctures this battery with a nail and boom, catastrophic fire and explosion, all the stuff. So that's exactly what people are worried about. The, vid the battery used in the video I just showed you is a lithium cobalt oxide battery. And that might seem very, very scary, but chances are you have a lot of these in your RV already. It's one of the most typical battery chemistries used in your smartphones, your tablets, your laptops, and it's even close to the chemistry that they use in the Tesla cars. Um, those little 18650 batteries um, are the same basic chemistry. And so, with a battery management system and properly contained and protected, you probably have these all over the place and you trust them pretty well. I know I trust my smartphone and my laptop. I take them in my RV all the time. My cell phone's in my bed usually. So that's that type of chemistry and it can be very volatile. There's a lot of energy pent up in there and when it hits oxygen, poof, fire. Um, but these batteries designed for RVs are lithium iron phosphate and they have a chemistry that is designed not to react with oxygen in the same way. So hopefully if you get a puncture and a really, really, really bad accident, um, you're just gonna get smoke, but no flames. And that's what we're gonna be testing today is how much abuse these can really take before something like that happens. Now keep in mind, no battery is fire safe. Lead acid batteries can cause hydrogen off-gassing and explosions or short out and cause fires. I've seen lead acid, AGM, just about any type of battery you can imagine cause a fire. Um, so are these completely fire safe? Nothing is. There's a lot of energy in there and if something goes wrong and maybe you had some flammable materials next to this battery, I would say a fire is completely possible. But we're testing the chemistry of the battery to see if these are as safe as they say they are compared to this video right here. So we don't want this, we just want some smoke and we want it to stop smoking and be done. So without any further ado, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna drop this guy from about a story. It's like throwing it off a one story building, it's about 10 feet tall, and I'm gonna be dropping it onto concrete pavers just to show you that they can take some abuse with absolutely no problem at all. So let's jump out there and check that out right now. Okay, so before we get started, I did charge this for two days. Have my voltmeter hooked up right there. You can see we're at 13.33 volts. And if we check the battery gauge, you can see that that is full. So she is fully charged and ready to be demolished. So as you can see from this drop, it actually breaks some of the concrete pavers. And I mean, this is a pretty significant impact dropping it from this height. And basically what I'm gonna do is just repeat this over and over and over and over and over again until I get bored with it. And then we're gonna take a look at the outer casing. But nowhere during my test drops here does the casing ever actually completely fail. That is a hardened flame retardant plastic on the outer case and then you have four battery cells on the inside that they themselves have an even harder protective casing to make sure that you don't ever have any problems uh, from puncture or you know from impacts and things like that. So basically, I just keep dropping this thing over and over and all we really managed to do is slightly dent uh, the bottom of the plastic as you can see right here. And uh, so that's really nothing to write home about and everything's still working fine. Let's check out the battery. And after our drops, it looks like the display has quit working on us, but we are still doing 13.35 volts. So we still are putting out uh, the full amount of power. So it's still not broken quite yet. So these things are obviously pretty tough. I was gonna tie it to a chain behind the, the Jeep and drag it around and run it over and a bunch of stuff. But to be honest, I didn't wanna risk destroying the outer casing. 
because when I do shoot this with a shotgun and the 357 Magnum, I wanna make sure that the case is intact so we can see how it reacts in its normal state. I didn't want a pile of broken plastic and battery cells that I was shooting at. So we're just gonna jump right into the big air test here and we're gonna shoot it with a 12 gauge shotgun right into the center. I believe the round is just normal bird shot, but it's out of a 12 gauge shotgun right to the middle. If it survives that, then we'll pump six rounds of 357 into it from different angles to make sure that we get every single cell in the battery. And that's after it survived the 12 gauge shotgun blast. Um, it goes without saying, please do not try this at home. I'm not responsible for this. That is very dangerous. Please don't try this at home. This is just something I did for science. Um, so please don't. And without further ado, we're gonna jump out there and see if we can get this thing to burst into flames. So let's get right to it. So I'm gonna speed some of this footage up because it's about 25 minutes long and we don't need to look at that much time of just the battery smoking. But at two minutes and 30 seconds after being shot, the smoke really starts to dissipate and calm down. So the battery has survived the point blank shotgun blast to the front. And uh, even though there's a lot of heat in there and everything, it totally withstood the blast. And now what we're gonna do is take six shots from a 357 Magnum and put one through the side and the rest into the front just to completely push this thing well over the scope of improbable failures. And we're just gonna go for broke. So here we go. So I've definitely punctured all the cells and it's releasing a ton of energy. 105 amp hours is enough to run my RV for days. So it's getting rid of all that energy. It is generating heat and you can see it even expands and pushes out the battery casing uh, throughout this lap. So I leave it running for a long time just to make sure that nothing was gonna happen. But at the end of the 24 minute test, uh, the battery was still doing just fine and I hit it with a fire extinguisher and I took it home. So that's a complete win in my opinion for this battery. Alrighty, well that's about all she wrote. 
Well, there you go, guys. Seven rounds of ammunition and compare that to the small nail going through this other type of battery chemistry that immediately burst into flames. Uh, that makes that a huge win for this type of battery chemistry, in my opinion. Is this battery completely fire safe? No, no battery is. Lead acid, AGM, and all the forms of lithium can and will cause a fire under the right circumstances, so I don't want to mislead anybody in that regard. Would I still trust these batteries knowing what I know after this test? Absolutely, I do. I have them in my house and in the RV. If anything, that proves to me that these are incredibly stable. Because if you have that kind of catastrophic damage occur to your battery while you're driving your RV, you have bigger problems because you were just in the worst accident I could imagine and I hope you're okay. But they did really, really well in my opinion. And thank you so much Lion Energy for sending me this perfectly good expensive lithium iron phosphate battery to destroy. They knew I was, they said, sure, shoot it, run it over, catch it on fire, whatever you want to do. We're pretty sure it's going to perform exactly like it's supposed to. And it did. So thanks so much for that. And they're also giving my subscribers 15% off their entire store. If you click the link down below, which saves you about 150 bucks off of this exact battery, which is huge savings and it helps me out as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. That's about it for this video. Please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out as well. And until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.